So, uh, did you, were you aware that uh, there were, like, Mr. Glenn, for example, and, like, he, he, he published immediately right after 9-11 and about the, the violence, uh, about the terror, and he condemned. So, did, were you aware of that letter, for example? But that's something I alluded to earlier. Um, that was, uh, the violence was highlighted but the voice in the wilderness was not covered and Mr. Glenn was the voice in the wilderness trying to get the message out and that message was overshadowed by uh, folks who were looking at uh, the Twin Towers and what happened there and they were looking at the after effect of that uh, ground zero and they missed the message that he was com coming forth with so that's why it's very important for um, organizations like IID to meet with groups to make sure that they know that uh, there is a different side and that they represent the mainstream thought as opposed to what they saw on television. So, you know, the interfaith dialogue efforts, which is uh, led or inspired by Glenn, uh, how do you think uh, enforcing interfaith dialogue, I know you, you've said uh, something along with that, but how do you think the Glenn's message of, of initiating interfaith dialogue and bringing it to the West. How do you think that's good for the universal peace or, or for humanity? Well, I'm saying uh, the results of it here in my state because as a result of uh, this effort, we are sitting down talking, we are sitting down dining, we are sitting down getting to know each other. We are also getting to know uh, different um, aspects of different religions, and so that, that's very good. Uh, we are sharing congregations. In fact, um, we invited um, the representative from IID to participate in the Martin Luther King prayer breakfast in Mississippi uh, just this year, and that was very impressionable because he made a very uh, good um, contribution to that interfaith dialogue breakfast uh, that was sponsored by elected officials here in Hines County. So. Um, that is good. It's going to take that uh, type of activity going on. We plan to build on that because dialogue is the key to making sure that we understand uh, what each culture, what each religion stands for. And this is a step in the right direction that we do plan to continue uh, in this state. Um, you've been to a country where Different religions, as you said, different faith members has been living peacefully for centuries. Uh, what do you think of, or what, what's your perception, what's your impression out of that a, that a faith in action, like a live faith there, and in, in the sense of the respect, tolerance, like what do you get out of the, the Turkish people's tolerance for others? Right. I, I see the same tolerance and trick that I saw in Kaduna. Um, I had a chance to visit them on occasions. And as an official, we had uh, official government meetings. The meeting started with prayer and ended with prayer. It started with the Muslim prayer and it was a Christian prayer. And, and it was flipped from time to time. But th the point I'm making is that both realized that they had to respect both religion and the diversity was something they were able to build upon. They respected that and they realized that they were not in conflict with one another, that they worshiped the same God, maybe had a different name, Allah, God, one and the same. Uh, they realized that they also honor the same prophets. So uh, that is something that uh, they focused on. They focused on their similarities and not their differences. They build on that. And that was the strength of the meeting we had in Kaduna. I saw that same thing happening in, in Turkey, that they did respect um, me because I came from a different religion and I didn't encounter any uh, barriers in terms of practicing my religion there. But I respected them, they respected me, and that's something that we uh, agreed to do and something we're going to build on. That was my actual decision. Uh, 
for Americans uh, in general or the different religions, what was uh, the reaction or any anything unpleasing have you seen? I I, I didn't uh, experience anything negative there. I uh, always felt a sense of warmth in my meetings with people um, in the universities, in the schools, in the homes, uh, with the students. Uh, a sense of warmth, genuine. Uh, they want to know me. I want to know them. Uh, they want to know more about my culture. I want to know more about their culture. So uh, there was nothing that I felt negative uh, during my dialogue with the people there. Um, so there are some scholars, scientists, or, or some community leaders, like many of uh, those people uh, they've interacted. Uh, when they notice the service, the education activities, uh, the institutions, or in a sense the, the, the violence-free generation that's being raised in, uh, by the inspiration of one man, the Fethullah Gulen, uh, within, uh, within his speeches and works that is uh, kind of Driving from the, the, the Islamic belief, uh, they said Gulen must be nominated for Nobel Peace Prize. And uh, what do you think of that? Well, I think that is a legitimate observation because um, he's in the power of empowering people and he realizes that knowledge is power. So he's trying to make sure that the young people have access to knowledge so they can become empowered. And because of that, uh, they will be in a position to work toward world peace as a result of what he's doing. So yes, uh, he would be uh, considered to be a Nobel Prize recipient because of what he's doing in terms of empowering people because he realizes that knowledge is power and he is making sure that he empowers the young people in this country to become our productive to citizens of society. So he should be committed for that. Uh, do, do, would you would you kindly uh, do an overall kind of analysis of Mr. Gulen, like within the uh, your acquaintance with with the people who follows him, or the readings, your observations, along with the trip, the schools, and all all that? Can you uh, analyze Mr. Gulen, like who is he? I think that you could best analyze him by looking at his followers. Uh, we had a chance to be in contact with some of his followers daily on our trip to Turkey. Um, first of all, I noticed that they were, first of all, very knowledgeable people. Secondly, very sincere people, sincere about their religion. And also, thirdly, they were very sincere about improving society. And fourthly, they were very uh, sincere about establishing and maintaining dialogue between uh, different groups. And that was, that, that was very good. Uh, they wanted to make sure that uh, his teachings were spread uh, not only to the students in those particular schools, but also uh, in society. Uh, and also, his students uh, worked very hard to make sure that they established uh, IID groups, not only um, in large cities in the U.S., but also in smaller states such as my state, to make sure that we um, establish and maintain uh, interfaith dialogue. So you judge a person by um, his followers, his disciples, and I was very impressed with his uh, disciples, his followers. He taught firsthand, who made an impression upon me. Uh, we do maintain uh, contact with those individuals because they are very sincere. And those individuals freely come uh, not only to this state but other places to uh, further explain different aspects of their culture and their religion. And it's very good that it's something that Mr. Galan taught, a tolerance, and that's something that he's doing. And also um, he stressed religion and he, uh, he also stressed education. And those who uh, he touched are working very hard to uh, improve the educational uh, status every day as a result of his teaching. and as, as that's very positive, so he's made an impression on those people who are making very positive uh, impressions in their particular cities and also in society, so that's very good.